cardiac output monitoring. Please like and subscribe. Cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by heart rate. It's usually measured in litres per minute and at rest it can be 5 to 6 litres and during exercise it can be over 35 litres per minute. This graph demonstrates Starling's law. Y-axis is stroke volume, X-axis is left ventricular end diastolic volume. As the volume in the LV left ventricle increases, the length of the myocardial fibres become more stretched and therefore increases the stroke volume and thus cardiac output. However, in the presence of excess fluid, the fibres become too stretched and this can result in a reduction in stroke volume and thus cardiac output. Therefore, we can apply a strategy to infuse the volume of fluid and assess the cardiac output to determine an individual's cardiovascular status. The ways to assess cardiac output can be classified into invasive, semi-invasive and non-invasive. Invasive, the gold standard, is the pulmonary artery catheter. Semi-invasive is the esophageal Doppler and pulse contour analysis by the lid core, which requires the lithium dilution and a venous and arterial cannula, PCO, which requires thermodilution via the central venous and arterial cannula, and finally non-invasive measures, which includes clinical assessment, pressure variation, thoracic bioimpedance, thoracic echocardiogram, and lid core rapid, which uses pulse contour analysis with an arterial line. The pulmonary artery or swan gans or right heart catheter is a catheter which comes in a range of sizes, commonly up to 110 centimeters, with one centimeter markings, which move through the right side of the heart into the pulmonary artery system. It traditionally has four ports, proximal, distal, balloon, and infusion port. It's used to measure cardiac output, mixed venous saturations, core temperature, and a range of pressure measurements. The measurements which it can take can be direct or derived. The direct ones include the pressure of the right atrium, ventricle, pulmonary artery, and pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, in addition to the SVO2 and temperature. As shown, there's a range of derived measurements. The characteristic waveform is produced as the catheter moves from the anal to internal jugular vein through the right side of the heart and up into the pulmonary artery. As the catheter is inserted into the right atrium, the pressure should be less than 6 millimetres of mercury. It will pass through the tricuspid valve, suggesting a more pulsatile waveform and thus RV contraction. As the catheter progresses, it will move up the pulmonary valve and will become more classically that of an arterial pulsation. And finally, as the catheter becomes wedged, the arterial pulsation will disappear and the venous pulsation will become more apparent, sugge suggesting full occlusion. In order to determine the cardiac output, we use a thermodilution technique, whereby 10 ml of cold fluid, commonly saline, is injected into the proximal part of the pulmonary artery catheter. This cold fluid then mixes with blood, causing a reduction in temperature over time, as shown by the graph. The graph is y-axis temperature change, x-axis is time in seconds. This temperature change is detected by a thermistor, a temperature-sensitive wire in the distal portion of the PA catheter. The rate of blood flow is inversely proportional to the change of temperature over time, so the y-axis on this graph is decreasing temperatures and therefore the mean decrease in temperature is inversely proportional to cardiac output. The Stewart-Hamilton equation then uses the area under the curve, the AUC, to determine the cardiac output. The esophageal Doppler enables monitoring of aortic blood flow. It's a quick and simple technique. It's inserted to the mid-esophagus, which is approximately 40 centimetres from the teeth. The probe itself is 90 centimetres long, and contains a transducer which is 45 degrees angulated. As blood flow characteristically occurs during systole, a classic waveform is produced as shown in the diagram. Y-axis is velocity, x-axis is time in seconds. During each systolic cycle, this is known as a flow time, there's a classic upstroke which is mean acceleration and is a measure of contractility. There's a maximum height or peak velocity which is the highest detectable aortic flow, and the area under the curve is equal to stroke distance, i.e. the distance the column of blood travels 
along the aorta during each ventricular cycle. Cardiac output is therefore measured indirectly by determining velocity. This is achieved by multiple equations. Firstly, by determining stroke distance, which is flow time times by the velocity. Stroke volume, which is stroke distance multiplied by the cross-sectional area. And finally, cardiac output can be determined by the stroke volume by the heart rate. This technique is based on multiple assumptions. First of all, the size of the aorta is based on the patient's characteristics. It only receives 70% of blood flow or 70% of cardiac output. It's cylindrical in shape and does not change and it is only laminar flow. If clinically indicated and the stroke volume is low, this could suggest indication for fluid requirements. If the peak velocity is reduced, you could suggest the need for inotropic support. Pressure variation. The arterial waveform is affected by changes in the respiratory cycle. During inspiration in a ventilated patient, there's increase in thoracic pressure, which ultimately results in a reduction in cardiac output. There's multiple techniques can exploit these changes in the waveform to determine the cardiovascular status. These techniques include the SVV and PPV, which are indicators of fluid responsiveness. The stroke volume variation is the difference between the maximum and minimum stroke volume divided by the average of two values. Conversely, the PPV is the percentage difference in the maximum and minimum pulse pressure divided by two values. In theory, therefore, patients who exhibit an SVV or PVB greater than 10 to 15% may be hypovolemic and therefore may respond to a fluid challenge.